We were looking at the damped harmonic oscillator using the method of multiple scales. We had expanded up to some order and we had found that at various orders one has to eliminate the resonant forcing terms. In particular at order epsilon we had discussed that the coefficient of the, the term that I have indicated here this term in the box the coefficient of this term is is something which will get disordered this this is an order epsilon term and so at large times time of the order 1 by epsilon square this term becomes as large as the first term in the expansion. So to prevent that we would have to set the term in that rectangular box to 0. I had shown that this leads to an equation for a0 recall that a0 is a function of t2. So, we now have an equation governing A0. Let us solve that equation and determine the functional dependence of A0 on T2. So, one can solve this equation easily and it leads to the solution A0 as a function of T2 is now some constant of integration. Now, the constant is no longer a function of any other variable because A0 is just a function of T2. So, this is really a constant into e to the power minus i t2 by 2. This is just the solution to the equation that I had indicated in the previous page at the bottom of the page. If you integrate that equation you will find this solution. Now this is the, is the constant of integration and in general it is a complex constant. Okay. So now let us put things together. So now we have found that x0 which was a function of t0 t1 and t2 is now a0 0 e to the power minus i t2 over 2 then it is into e to the power minus t1 into e to the power i t0 ok. This is essentially rewriting this expression in the yellow box x0 is a0 e to the power i t0 and a0 in turn we have found is equal to small a0 into. So, we have found earlier that a0 is small a0 into e to the power minus t1 and using the equation for small a0 we have now determined x0 completely. So, that is our x0. Of course, this has to have a complex conjugate added to it to give us a real x0. Similarly, one can find x1 and this is equal to a1 and this is a function of t2 e to the power minus t1 e to the power i t0 plus complex conjugate. Once again we have we have found this part before we had found this part earlier we had written that it is so this is basically just a1 it is small a1 into e to the power minus t1 into e to the power i t0. So, it is a1 into e to the power minus t1 into e to the power i t0. The second part is not there because we have set it equal to 0 in order to determine small a0. I hope this is clear. So, we need to determine this a1 as a function of t2. It is clear that we will have to go to the next order in order to do this. I am just going to write down the answer for you because the procedure is now straightforward show it may be shown that a1 of t2 is equal to some a11 I am following the same notation as earlier into e to the power minus i t0 
2 over 2 where a11 is once again a complex constant. This I leave it to you to show yourself it is not difficult. Once you do this then we can write down the answer up to order epsilon and we have found that this is a not not into we can combine all the exponentials. So, I can write so e to the power minus t 1 does not have i. So, I will write it separately and then I will write i t naught minus t 2 over 2 and then plus epsilon times a 1 and we have seen that a 1 is basically a 1 1 and the same thing here e to the power minus t 1 into e to the power i into t naught minus t 2 over 2 plus of course the complex conjugate of the entire expression. So, there will be two parts to it. Now, let us shift to real notation before we do that let us you can see immediately that we will have a term which is like this. So, we can write this as a not not plus epsilon a 1 1 e to the power minus t 1 into e to the power i t naught minus t 2 over 2 plus complex conjugate. Now, you can see that this is a constant this is a complex constant because a naught a double 0 is complex constant a double 1 is also complex constant and epsilon is real. So, the whole thing is a is another complex constant. I can write that a double 0 plus epsilon a 1 1 is equal to some complex number whose amplitude is L and whose phase is some beta with the understanding that L is now real and beta is also a real number both L and beta are real numbers. If we do that then the expression that I had written earlier may be written as L e to the power minus t 1 I would also have a e to the power i beta, but I will absorb the beta in the in the exponential which was already there with the i. So, I am going to just adding it up to this part and then plus complex conjugate of whatever is on the left. Remember that now L and beta are real by definition and so if we now shift to complex exponential uh, to real notation using e to the power i theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta you can immediately see that this just becomes L e to the power minus t 1 cos of t naught minus t 2 by 2 plus beta and we do not have the sign part because the sign cancels cancels out. And so, this if we now go back to instead of writing 3 different scales t 1, t 2, t 0 we go back to our original scale then this gives you e to the power minus t cos of this is t this is half epsilon square t plus beta this is equal to L e to the power minus t cos of 1 minus epsilon square by 2 into t plus beta. So, our final answer now of course, there are higher order terms here. Now, notice that so I, I have missed epsilon here t 1 is epsilon t. So, t 1 t naught is was defined as t, t 1 is epsilon t, t 2 is epsilon squared. Now, notice that this is not completely the solution up to order epsilon square we would have to add in general I will have to add another part here which would be epsilon square into x 2. We have not done that step you can go ahead and do that step and make it completely consistent. But the basic purpose of this exercise was just to demonstrate that what is multiple scales doing. So, first thing that you notice is that the multiple scales is giving you an answer 
which will not give become disorder in time. It has also eliminated the process of doing multiple scales itself eliminates all the resonant forcing terms and consequently there are no secular terms. Let us compare this solution with the exact solution that we had written at the starting of this example. So, we had seen that this so the we were studying the damped harmonic oscillator and uh, this was the equation whose solution we have obtained perturbatively using the method of multiple scales. Okay. And this equation we have seen earlier has the solution this is the exact solution. This is a linear equation so it can be solved exactly very easily. It will be some a e to the power minus epsilon t cos square root 1 minus epsilon square into t plus phi. If I replace the a by l, a and phi are real numbers so I can use any other symbol. And I am replacing phi by beta just so that we can compare with this expression. So, you can see that these are this is nothing what we have recovered is nothing but the expansion of 1 minus half epsilon square t plus dot 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 plus t plus beta. So, you can see that you can guess what will be the higher order corrections. The regular perturbation what it would have done is it would have expanded this term also and this term also and consequently it would have taken the product of the two expansions. So, consequently we would have found secular terms as long as we truncated the expansion up to any finite number of terms and took the limit t going becoming larger and larger. Here what it does is it keeps the e to the power minus epsilon t outside it recovers the e to the power minus epsilon t at the first order correction and then it expands the frequency. Okay. So, it, it basically says that square root 1 minus epsilon square t is approximately 1 minus half epsilon square into t when epsilon is sufficiently small. You can take this to higher orders of epsilon and you will recover more and more correction. So, you can go to more time scales. So, you can go to t3 which will be epsilon cube into t. So, essentially if you go to even longer time scales you will discover that the frequency is not exactly 1 minus half epsilon square, but it is actually 1 minus half epsilon square plus some correction. So, this term will have a small mismatch with the theoretical prediction. Okay. So, that is how the basic method works. We will continue our discussion of the method of multiple scales particularly because this is a very important technique which is frequently used in analyzing interfacial waves. So, we will go on now we have just completed our discussion of using multiple scales to obtain an approximate solution to the damped harmonic equation. We now go on to another equation the damped harmonic equation was a linear equation we now go on to a nonlinear equation. So, this equation that we are going to now do using the method of multiple scales will not have any damping. So, the energy so this equation will have something like an energy which will be a conserved quantity. However, this equation will be slightly different from the nonlinear pendulum in the sense that instead of having sin theta which is a nonlinear function of theta it will have a just a cubic term in theta. So, this equation was one of the early equations which was used for understanding anharmonic behavior of oscillators. So, the equation is like this. So, you can immediately see that up to here this is a harmonic oscillator. Omega 0 square is just some square of some characteristic frequency, but this term actually is a nonlinear term. Epsilon is small but positive, and so you can see that this is a kind of a so, so you can think that this is the equation of motion of some mass which is connected to a nonlinear spring. So, if it was a linear spring it would just go as minus so this would be just this, but then I am adding some some delta into some x cube term or rather this 
okay, and then I am non dimensionalizing it which is leading me to the duffing equation. Now you can immediately see qualitatively what is going to happen if I did not have the second term. The second term you can see that if x is positive, if it was a linear spring the force would be from right to left, it would try to the restoring force would try to pull it back to the equilibrium position. Here too the restoring force tries to pull it back and it tries to pull it back harder than a linear spring. So we do expect periodic solutions, we also expect that because the restoring force depends on epsilon, so we do expect that the time period of motion will be dependent on epsilon okay, like the nonlinear pendulum. Note however that the first correction in the nonlinear pendulum is a minus term approximate sin theta by its Taylor series about theta equal to 0 then it is theta minus theta cube by factorial 3. Here it is a plus epsilon into u cube. Let us look at this equation. So I will just erase this. So now before we do, so this is we are going to do a multiple scale on this. This can also be solved by the Linstead point carry technique, but this is just to show you that the multiple method of multiple scales is very general. It works, it worked on the linear equation that I that we discussed earlier and it is going to work on this equation as well. So let us draw the phase portrait of this oscillator before we attack it using the method, method of multiple scales. So as before we convert this, this is a second order ordinary differential equation, we convert this into two first order ordinary differential equations, they are expected to be coupled and nonlinear. So we define u to be x and we define du by dt to be y. So this immediately gives me dx by dt is du by dt which is y and dy by dt which is basically the equation itself, the duffing equation itself. Okay. dy by dt if I shift the omega square u and minus uh, epsilon u cube on the left hand side then I get minus omega 0 square into x minus epsilon x cube. So this is we have we have learned to do this process before and I can write this as minus x into omega 0 square uh, plus epsilon x square. Now I can take the ratio of these two terms and uh, if I take if I divide the second term by the first term then I get dy by dx is equal to minus omega 0 square x minus epsilon x cube divided by y. This equation can be easily integrated and this is telling me that y square by 2 plus omega 0 square x square by 2 plus epsilon x4 by 4 is equal to some constant of integration. It is convenient if I choose the constant to be c by 2 so that I can cancel out a factor of 2 everywhere. If I do this then I get y square is equal to c minus omega 0 square x square minus epsilon x4 by 2. And so like before we will have to plot this equations of y as a function of x for various values of c. Now for convenience what in I have plotted it in my next slide I have chosen w0 square is equal to 1. This is just for convenience it does not need to be unity. So we will have two parts to it one part will be the positive square root and one part will be the negative square root. This is very similar to what we did for the nonlinear pendulum. So let us look at the face portrait of the Duffing equation. Now before we draw the face portrait let us understand what are the fixed points of this equation. So if you look at this equation it is clear that x dot is equal to 0 when y is equal to 0. Similarly from this equation y dot is equal to 0 when x is 0 this part. Omega 0 square and epsilon are positive and so the only 
value of x at which y dot is equal to 0 is x equal to 0. So, consequently x comma y, so let us call it y star and x star. So, x star y star being 0 comma 0 are the fixed points of the system. This is, this is the only fixed point of the system. So, now let us draw the face portrait. So, we are going to draw this curve. As I told earlier, we will choose omega 0 square is equal to 1 for convenience and we have chosen an epsilon which is equal to 0 0.2. So, I am going to plot various values of this curve because this is a y square here. So, there will be a plus square root and a minus square root. And for each value of c, I will get one phase space trajectory. Let us look at those trajectories. So, this is what the phase portrait looks like. So, this is the fixed point of the system. So, fixed point. This is corresponding to x is equal to 0 and y equal to 0. Now, note that I am plotting each curve as I said earlier for a different value of c. So, the curve recall are basically y square plus x square plus epsilon is 0 0.2 divided by 2 into x to the power 4 is equal to constant. So, in other words I have y square plus x square plus 0 0.1 times x4 is equal to c and I am choosing various values of c here on the right hand side. So, the value of c ranges from 0.1 to about 20. You can see that as c gets smaller, the phase space trajectory also gets smaller. So, this is the smallest value of c for which I have plotted and that is the largest value of c for which I have plotted. Once again you can split these curves into two parts, the upper part and the lower part. The upper part will correspond to the positive square root and the lower part will correspond to the negative square root. So, we notice that there is one fixed point in the system and there are these periodic oscillatory solutions about the fixed point. One can go to higher and higher values of c, recall that c is related to the energy of the system and so higher and higher values of c just give me uh, larger and larger uh, phase space trajectories. So, now we are uh, it is obvious from this figure that there are oscillatory periodic solutions to this equation. Let us find those solutions. Now, how do we find out these periodic solutions? Let us use once again the method of multiple scales. Once again, what are the time scales in the problem? So, you can see that at very early times, we, can, we know that the period of the nonlinear oscillator is different from the period of the linear oscillator. Now, at very early times, we are not going to see that period. We are not going to see the effect of that small difference in frequency which is there between a nonlinear oscillator and a linear oscillator. Okay. So, as a first approximation we will find that it is just a harmonic oscillator with time period omega 0. Now, at the next order approximation we will find corrections to that. Let us work out those corrections. So, we have We are not going to use the Linstead point Poincare technique, we will use the method of multiple scales. So, we will define like before. We do not intend to solve the problem up to order epsilon uh, square, but we have to go to order epsilon square in order to determine all the unknowns up to order epsilon. So, one has to do a little bit more algebra for here. So, we have this and then we have epsilon square. So, like before d by dt is just d0 plus epsilon d1 epsilon square d2 and d square by dt square If I take this and then I have to do an expansion which is x0 uh, sorry u0 is equal to u is equal to u0 which is a function of t0, t1, t2 plus epsilon u1, 
t0, t1, t2 plus epsilon square u2. Now let us do that expansion. So we have to substitute all, all of this. So the procedure is pretty standard now, I am sure all of you are familiar with this. So I will straight away jump to collecting terms at various orders. So all this is obtained once you substitute this into this equation and this also into this equation and then start collecting terms at various orders. The left hand side is the same, the right hand side now you are familiar with this one has to be careful while doing the right hand side if you miss even one term your answers will be incorrect. So one has to be careful that you have not missed any term nor have you included a term which is not supposed to be there at that given order. Once again I would like to reiterate that we are not going to solve the problem up to order epsilon square but to determine one unknown at order epsilon one has to go up to order epsilon square. So that is why I am having to write up to order epsilon square. The algebra is slightly lengthy here but since we have already learned how to do this uh, and we are familiar with this from the damped harmonic oscillator I am going to skip some steps but it is easy for you if you work out the algebra to do those steps. It is exactly similar to what we had done earlier. The only difference is here we are dealing with a non-linear equation uh, in the earlier example we dealt with a linear equation. Okay. So these are our solutions at various orders. Now let us uh, solve these, so let us write down the solution at order 1. So at order 1 the solution is the simplest, so u0 is just a which is a function of like before t1 t2 into e to the power i omega 0 t0 plus cc. Now at order epsilon we will have to plug this in the left hand side remains the same and we had it we had written in the last slide that the right hand side consists of these terms which depend on the previous order. So if I apply now I know the solution at the previous order and so this just becomes twice i omega 0 del a by del t1. minus a e to the power i omega 0 t0 plus its complex conjugate whole cube and uh, there will be one more complex conjugate which is the complex conjugate of this term. So you can put cc1 cc2 if you want so this is cc2 and this is cc1 for example. Now we will have to work out the right hand side. So this term is obviously there. Then we have a cube e to the power thrice i omega 0 t0. Now there will be one more term which will be the product of 3 times a square into b and that will give me, so there is a minus 3 a square e to the power twice i omega 0 t0 into b and b is just a bar uh, e e to the power minus i omega 0 t0. Okay. So I will have a a bar here and e to the power i omega 0 t0. I, I hope this is clear what we are doing is we are just taking this and adding its complex conjugate part and cubing the thing. So the cube of this thing I have already written. plus 3a square b is what I have written. Okay. You can see that e to the power twice i to omega 0 t0 minus. So this will give me e to the power i omega 0 t0 plus I will have thrice a b square and that will have e with a negative exponent but that will exactly be the complex conjugate of this part. 
and then I will have one more term which is a bar q e to the power minus thrice i omega 0 t 0 and that is the complex conjugate of this part. So, I will just write the first two terms and then put a cc at the end to indicate the other two terms. We will continue this in the next video.